SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. Tonight, stench worsens. The Colombo garbage issue rumbles on. More disciples of Zaharan. Three members of Jamate Milatu Ibrahim arrested. A guarantee from India. The Assistant Indian High Commissioner gives a seal of approval over Sri Lanka's security. We are actively encouraging Indians to come to Sri Lanka. Everything is normal. In Neighbourly spat or a catastrophe? Pakistan gears up to expel India's top diplomat over Kashmir Rao. All this and much more coming up tonight on First at Nine, this Wednesday, the 7th of August 2019. From other Verona. This is Other There Now First at Nine, live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, the stench of garbage rife as waste left uncollected in Colombo. We start off with that story as the garbage issue of Colombo shows no sign of being addressed with waste continuing to be piled up at roadside, leaving Sri Lanka at risk of visiting tourists forming a bleak picture of the island nation. At a time when the government is attempting to attract as many tourists as possible, a question also rises as to whether it's reasonable to have a bickering politicians and authorities compromise those efforts. Last Monday, the Ministry of Megapolis and Western Development decided to halt the dumping of garbage at the Keravalapitiya waste site, which was used to dump garbage accumulated in Colombo and its suburbs since 2017 due to the site's capacity being exceeded. As a result, heaps of garbage were seen along the roads of Colombo today as well. Employees of the Colombo Municipal Council say that they were asked not to collect any waste since there is no place to dump them. Although Aruakalu Sanitary Landfill Site can be used for the purpose, it is still not functioning since the Vanathavillua Urban Council in Putlam District is asking for a daily charge of 100,000 rupees to dump garbage there. Former commander of Sri Lanka Navy, retired Admiral Wasantha Karanagoda and former commander of Sri Lanka Air Force, retired Air Chief Marshal Roshan Gunathilaka were awarded the highest honorary ranks in the military. Admiral Karanagoda is now promoted as the Admiral of the Fleet, while Air Chief Marshal Gunathilaka is now the Marshal of the Air Force. President Maitripala Sirisena bestowed the highest honorary ranks of the military on former commander of Sri Lanka Navy, retired Admiral Vasanta Karanagoda, and former commander of Sri Lanka Air Force, retired Air Chief Marshal Roshan Gunatilaka, through an extraordinary Gazette notification yesterday. Admiral of the Fleet and Marshal of the Air Force are the foremost honorary ranks awarded to a naval and air force officer during their military career. These ranks were awarded for their outstanding gallantry, meritorious performances and distinguished service to the nation during the humanitarian operation and defeat of terrorism in Sri Lanka. Admiral of the Fleet Vasanta Karanagoda, who served as the commander of the Sri Lanka Navy from 2005 to 2009, had been committed to the humanitarian operation and ending of the war during its most crucial years. Marshal of the Air Force Roshan Gunatilaka, meanwhile, served as the commander of Sri Lanka Air Force from 2006 to 2011, contributing to the end of the war. Gunatilaka also served as the chief of defense staff. With these new promotions, all three commanders of the Tri Forces, who served during the last stages of the war, have now been bestowed the highest military ranks in the country. President Maitripala Sirisena left the country this morning to commence a four-day state visit in Cambodia. Deputy Prime Minister of Cambodia welcomed the Sri Lankan head of state at the Phnom Penh International Airport.
Deputy Prime Minister of Cambodia welcomed the Sri Lankan head of state at the Phnom Penh International Airport. President Sirisena then attended a business forum organized by the Cambodian Chamber of Commerce, which was attended by the Cambodian Prime Minister Shamse Hun Sen. During the business forum, broad attention was drawn to enhancing trade and commerce ties between the two nations. Through this state visit, President Sirisena is scheduled to meet the King of Cambodia, Narodom Shahamuni, and to hold bilateral talks with high-profile representatives of the Cambodian government. During the talks, special attention will be given to expand economic, trade, tourism, and Buddhist relations between the two nations. Prime Minister Ranil Wickrama Singha reiterates the need for Sri Lanka to transform into an export economy. At an event held at the premises of the Sapakaskanda oil refinery today, the Premier said that the government is currently focusing on laying a strong economic foundation over the next years, which could help solve many of the economic issues of the country uh, that is faced with now. Yet again, drawing comparisons with Singapore, the Premier also lamented Sri Lanka's failure to grab the opportunities which came its way with both hands. The 50th anniversary of the Sapugaskanda oil refinery was held under the patronage of Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe today. Only 35% of the national fuel requirement is handled by our fuel refinery. We import fuel to cover the rest of the requirement. We have not invested to sort out this problem during the period of 1994 to 2014. Had we done so, we could have saved 400 million US dollars annually. Without doing any of it, they built flyovers and highways in jungles. We should not let them do things like that yet again. International ships which reach the Singapore port get their fuel from there and then leave, which is what Singapore wanted. They created a big industry as such, but we could not manage to do it, although we established a fuel refinery before them. Today, we buy fuel as per Singapore spot price. We never took the opportunity which came our way. This is why we must initiate programs to revive the country. We have to also change our perceptions and we are ready for that revolution. Over the next five years, we would then be able to lay the foundation to resolve our problems. We already have the biggest port in the region, which is the Colombo port. We need to start the development process from there onwards. We should also expand development through our airport. This is how we would be able to become an economic center. We must work towards an export economy. Catholic politicians representing the joint opposition today requested opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa to persuade the government into appointing an independent commission to probe the Easter Sunday attacks. Addressing media after having a discussion with the politicians, the opposition leader went on to say that he will forward a proposal to the tune in writing to the president and the prime minister. Catholic and Christian parliamentarians, former provincial council members, chairmen of local authorities and mayors met with opposition leader Mahindra Rajpaksha this morning at his official residence. They're calling for the appointment of an independent commission to probe these to Sunday attacks and to take legal action against those who are behind it. We're going to request the president and the prime minister in writing to appoint a commission. These politicians are of the view that those who insult religious leaders should be punished and should not engage in politics. We agree with that view. It's been more than three months since these to Sunday attacks and that's why religious leaders, including the cardinal, expressed their disapproval not only to the government but also to us. That's why we are intervening. In the meantime, the opposition leader declared open the new building of the Moratua Municipal Council and distributed title deeds to members of the locality. The United National Party has an internal conflict these days over selecting the presidential candidate. Everyone is putting up banners and posters everywhere saying that they're ready to contest. There are advertisements in newspapers as well. Who pays for all these advertisements? It's the money of taxpayers. This country needs another change now and it doesn't have security today. These to Sunday attacks have prevented everyone in the country from living without fear. 
Three more members of the banned organization Jamate Milatu Ibrahim were arrested today. The latest arrest by the Ampara police brings up the number of arrestees of JMI membership to nine. Police said that the arrests had received training from ringleader of the Easter Sunday terror attacks, Zaharan Hashim, at various terror training camps. Three members of the banned organization Jamate Milat Ibrahim were arrested in Ampara today following intelligence gathered by State Intelligence Service. The first suspect is a resident of Polonaro by the name Mohideen Bawa Mohammed Rumi, alias Abu Akran. Police say that he had received terror training by Zahran Hashim at the terror camp in Nurelia. Rumi had also been active as the Polonaro district leader of JMI while continuing his higher education at the Open University in Navala. Meanwhile, the second suspect, Mohammed Rial Mohammed Sajid, alias Abu Salman, is a resident of Mamanello who had also undergone terror training at the camp in Nurelia. The third suspect, Mohammed Ramzin Rushdi Ahmed, is a resident of Varkapolo who had also received terror training at Zaran's camp located in the area of Hambantota. Police have so far arrested nine members of the banned organization Jamate Milatu Ibrahim. In the meantime, acting OIC of the Vellambada police, Bandula Bandara, has been interdicted for attempting to return 67 machetes and 16 axes that were taken into custody from a mosque in the area following these to Sunday attacks. The officer decided to return these items pertaining to the ongoing court case without the knowledge of any superior officer. It is reported that the board of trustees of the relevant mosque had requested the officer to return these items, claiming they needed them ahead of the Hajj festival to slaughter cows. An investigation has been launched under the purview of the DIG Kandy. Assistant High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, Dhirendra Singh, today gave India's view on Sri Lanka's security situation in the aftermath of the Easter Sunday attacks. He insisted that Sri Lanka's security situation has seen uh, much improvement, that he encouraged Indian tourists to visit the island nation without any fear. The Indian Assistant High Commissioner visited the chief prelates of Askiria and Malvatha chapters to inform them about the newly informed first Buddhist majority union territory in India, Lakhna. Assistant High Commissioner of India to Sri Lanka, Dhirendra Singh, first called on Chief Prelate of the Askiriya Chapter, Most Venerable Varkagore Sri Nyana Ratanathera, at the Askiriya Temple in Kandy today. He then called on Chief Prelate of the Malvatta Chapter, Most Venerable Tibbatuave Sri Sumangalathera. The Indian Assistant High Commissioner later expressed these views to media. I uh, met uh, the Most Venerable uh, Mahanaikas of Asgiriya and uh, Malvatta chapters and I informed them uh, about uh, the good news of uh, creation of uh, Union Territory of Ladakh. It will be the first Buddhist majority Union Territory in India and uh, this has been created after removing certain provisions which uh, stopped the aid from uh, central government that was being given to the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Those provisions have been removed. The state of Jammu and Kashmir was uh, made into uh, two union territories. Both of them were in fact very happy and uh, they said that it's indeed nice that uh, there is a union territory with the, with the Buddhist majority in India. They said that it was a purely internal affair of India and uh, uh, they wished uh, all the very best to the new province and hoped uh, that uh, in future it will be uh, converted into a full-fledged state as well. The Assistant High Commissioner of India also spoke about India's view on the security situation in Sri Lanka in the aftermath of the Easter attacks. The security situation in Lanka, in fact, uh, has improved uh, a whale of a lot, as a matter of fact, and uh, we have relaxed uh, all the travel advisories which were put in place earlier, and we are actively encouraging Indians to come to Sri Lanka. Everything is normal. In fact, our Prime Minister came here. He chose it immediately after his re-election. Uh, he came here, uh, you know, uh, during his first outing. He went to Maldives and then he came here. So Consequently, uh, there's nothing wrong with the security situation here and the security forces here are well equipped and uh, uh, competent enough to handle any kind of threat that people might feel. I'll invite everybody to come and visit Sri Lanka. There's nothing that should uh, prevent them whatsoever. UPFA parliamentarian S.B. Desanayake today alluded to the content of a recent discussion held between President Maitripala Sirisena and opposition leader Mahinda Rajapaksa. Addressing a media briefing, he said that the duo discussed the presidential candidate for the looming election. And the discussion between the two leaders is proof that both of them 
would back the same candidate. In the meantime, the maiden chief minister of the Northeastern Provincial Council, Vardaraja Piramal, also arrived at the venue as the media briefing was still in progress. During a media briefing held at the residence of UPFA parliamentarian S.B. Disanagar today in Colombo, the MP revealed that President Maitripala Sirisen and opposition leader Mahindra Rajpaksha had a cordial meeting recently. He added that the meeting was proof that the two leaders would work together for one candidate during the looming presidential election. In the meantime, the maiden chief minister of the Northeastern Provincial Council, Varadaraja Perumal, arrived at MP Disanayaka's residence as the media briefing was still underway. So what's your future plan? I mean, you join with the SLPP or SLFPPO? My party now is, uh, is a social democratic party. We were EPR love, then the uh, left all these uh, revolution, liberations, ELAM and everything because that gives a misunderstanding among the people. We are still not sure who is going to be the candidate of uh, uh, in the uh, in the in the next election no, and there is going to be only two candidates one is the ranil vikram singha's man another is the Mr. the honorable rajabaksha's uh, mahindra rajabaksha's choice we are taking this not the side of the unp who is the candidate of the slp the honorable mahindra rajabaksha will uh, decide and we will decide later. So you meet the Who you? Still I have, we had a we had a very good meeting with him. It was a very pleasant. It was giving a very confidence uh, in the future, and we hope uh, things will happen and everybody will work together. No, no, now, now, no. We are together. No, is we always together? Ah, yes. <laughs> we always together. Oh. Parliamentarian of the United People's Freedom Alliance, Shanta Bandara, has resigned as a National List MP. The decision has been made in order for Bandara to fill in the vacancy created by late Kurunagala District MP Salin, the Disanayaka. When other Derana inquired about the move, Bandara stated that he took the decision as per a proposal by the EPFA to represent Parliament through the people's vote. The Attorney General has served indictments to former Colombo Chief Judicial Medical Officer Dr. Ananda Samarasekara in the murder case of Wazim Tajuddin. The former Chief JMO was indicted before the Colombo High Court for concealing evidence pertaining to the case. He surrendered to court back in 2017 over Wazim Tajuddin's murder case and was granted bail later. The annual Islamic religious ceremony of the Sri Lanka Air Force was held at the Kolpiti Jumma Mosque this morning. Commander of the Sri Lanka Air Force, Air Marshal Sumangala Dias, graced the event as the chief guest with Air Force Chief of Staff, Air Vice Marshal Sudarshana Patrana, also in attendance. The annual Islamic religious ceremony of the Sri Lanka Air Force was held at the Kolpiti Jumma Mosque this morning with the commander of Sri Lanka Air Force, Air Marshal Sumangala Dias, as its chief guest. Individual responsibility and collective responsibility. Individual responsibility everyone has to do. Collective responsibility, if one group of people fulfill that responsibility, the entire nation is, have done their responsibility. But if everyone fails, that means everyone is responsible, not only that group of people. For example, I consider our groups a similar institution which stands on behalf of humanity, on behalf of the nation, carrying the individual responsibility of everyone to fulfill in the collective form which has been formed on each and every one of us. I mentioned the greatest rewarding act, eyes of Almighty Allah, who have created all of us. The greatest reward. No other act of worship has the similar equal of reward than providing security. And it comes the utmost first priority according to Quran and our guidance of our love of our God. And we'll bring more news, local and business after this short commercial break. Welcome back. 
Nishan Durayappa, who is currently the Halton Regional Police Deputy Chief in Canada, made history by becoming the first ever officer of a Sri Lankan background and first South Asian to be selected to serve as police chief in Ontario's history. Durayappa will be sworn in on the 1st of next month as the new Peel Regional Police Chief, which is located in southern Ontario, Canada, with a community of one 1.4 million residents. His promotion is seen as historic and a great Canadian success story. The decision comes after months of searching that included an online survey that asked the public for their input on what the police service board should look for in a new chief. A veteran of 25 years, Dure Appa, who is fondly known as Nish within the community, has been a deputy chief in Halton since 2015 and served in a number of roles, including those that focus on guns, gangs and drugs. The Canadian Police Service Board went on to say that the appointment marks only the second time in Peel's history in which the chief was hired externally. A former child soldier of the terrorist group, the LTTE, has been convicted for murder in Australia. The conviction relates to the murder of his housemate back in 2017. Identified as Ganesh Murthy Theagaraja, the ex-LTTE member is said to have fled to Australia by boat. The investigators had found that Theagaraja, after murdering his housemate, Mohammed Mansoor, attempted to falsify the crime scene to make it look like others were involved and lied about Mansoor trying to recruit him to join the terror group Islamic State. Australian media say that Theagaraja will be sentenced later this month. The Sri Lankan government is negotiating with the UAE for the transfer of expat prisoners to the island. Sri Lankan ambassador to the United um, Arab Emirates, Ahmed L.S. Khan, had made the remark to media. Khan, is said, Khan has said that Sri Lanka has an extradition treaty with the UAE and are negotiating the transfer of prisoners. He added that there are about 600 Sri Lankans in prison in the UAE, mostly for minor offences, and that they can serve their sentences in Sri Lanka, which will help them meet their families. Khan is also quoted as saying that prisons in Sri Lanka maintain international standards and if Sri Lankan inmates in the UAE are given the option, they will return to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka will host the first meeting of the Indian Ocean Rim Association Maritime Safety and Security Working Group in Colombo on the 8th on the 8th and 9th of this month. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said the meeting will finalize the work plan for two years, advancing the IORA action plan for 2017 to 2021, with member states towards developing a regional agenda. Indian Ocean Rim Association is a dynamic intergovernmental organization aimed at strengthening regional cooperation and sustainable development within the Indian Ocean region through its 22 member states and nine dialogue partners. The IORA Maritime Safety and Security Work Working Group has established in September 2018 and presently chaired by Sri Lanka for a period of two years. Last year, the terms of reference for the working group was finalized in Colombo. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs added that the engagement with the IRA aligns with Sri Lanka's blue-green economy agenda while enhancing cooperation with the Indian Ocean states.
Taking you to today's stock market performance, equities closed firmer, snapping six straight sessions of losses and recovered from a near two-week closing low in the previous session as investors bought beaten down stocks. The all share price index ended 0.73% higher at 5,889.68. Turnover was 461.1 million rupees, less than this year's daily average and foreign investors sold a net 7.3 million rupees worth of shares today. They, however, have been net buyers of 497 million rupees worth of equities so far this year. And now we'd have a brief report of today's market performance. Bond market witnessed the limited activity within a thin volume while the overall yield curve remained broadly unchanged. And meanwhile, the primary bill auction held today, the yield of three months, six months, and one year further declined to 7.75, 7.85, and 8. 11.11 percentage. And the stock market rebounded to the positive territory after lapse of which lasts for a six straight session and gain made by the Ceylon coal source and commercial bank. And turnover recorded a two weeks low while net foreign outflow was witnessed amidst low foreign participation. The Sri Lankan rupee snapped a seven session losing streak and closed at 177.40 to 50 cents against the US dollar compared with yesterday's close of 177.45 to 65. Here's a look at today's foreign exchange rates. We'll bring you the latest on the growing tensions between India and Pakistan after the short break. Welcome back. We take a look at your top international stories. Shushma Swaraj, one of India's best known politicians, passed away. Swaraj served as foreign minister for five years and had suffered a cardiac arrest yesterday. She was a popular minister in Narendra Modi's first term as prime minister but did not contest parliamentary elections earlier this year. Swaraj was 67 at the time of her passing and had been suffering from poor health. The news of her death prompted an outpouring of grief and condolences both from fellow politicians and from Indians across the globe, as well as international politicians and diplomats. The row between India and Pakistan over the disputed territory of Kashmir has deepened after Pakistan said it was expelling India's top diplomat and suspending trade. Indian administered Kashmir has been on lockdown since the Indian government decided on Monday to strip the region of its special constitutional status. Telephone networks and the internet were cut off on Sunday evening. Tens of thousands of troops have been patrolling the streets. The Himalayan region of Kashmir is claimed in its entirety by both India and Pakistan, but they each control only parts of it. Instances of protests and stone throwing have been reported despite the communication blackout and a curfew. Local leaders have also been detained. Taking you to sports, former Sri Lankan cricketer Ramesh Ratnayaka is appointed as the interim coach for the upcoming Test Series with New Zealand. Chandika Hathru Singha, who oversaw Sri Lanka during the World Cup campaign, has 14 days to plead his case. Meanwhile, the chairman of the Sri Lanka cricket, Shammi Silva, speaking at a media briefing in Colombo, said that it's now time to rectify mistakes made by the board with the recruitment of Hathru Singha. Question for Dimut Karuna Ratna, very straightforward question. Who's your coach? <laughs> 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 
that's not i can't answer for that you, you should ask from the uh, cricket board uh, ramesh satnayaka will be the interim coach we have given the chandiga letter so we will wait for 14 days to reply after that we will take a action ai test championship ka peni peni hun karu me maru kan hitui vadipurama chandika athuru singa ganda kiuwe okolla It was you media who asked to recruit Chandika Hathrasinghe for the post and it is you yourselves who asked to chase him away. We are not ready to chase anyone away just because media asks us to. This decision was taken after observing the performance of this coach. I was in the board when Chandika Hathrasinghe was recruited. We have made some mistakes. We need to rectify these mistakes in order for Sri Lanka cricket to move forward. We even cancelled the contract of Jeff Marsh. We can't let Sri Lanka cricket face its downfall in order to protect the coach. We usually recruit the best coaches in the world. If the coaches don't do their job properly, we need to deal with them accordingly. Ainkara coach oberagana cricket ekak batinda denda band Jeff Marsh ge contract ekalin avathala outa loku gana gewannuna ne ehema e wage a e weida den api meka ape legal advice okkoma aragana thamai karanni. We are proceed. Well, we'll bring you more tomorrow. Good night.